Okay, today we have our recitation on chapter 17, our second chapter on waves, which was dedicated to sound waves. The major concepts we covered in chapter 17 were, first we had some basics uh, of sound waves, definitions, the speed of sound, and so on, uh, traveling sound waves, and then we considered the interference of sound waves, then we considered intensity and sound level, after which we discussed the resonance of sound waves in air columns, tubes, and pipes. And finally, we discussed the Doppler effect. In the lecture, we have uh, discussed two problems on the Doppler effect. So these are quite sufficient to understand the Doppler effect. And therefore, today, I will consider problems on the other ideas, specifically interference, intensity, and resonance. So, uh, here are the basic ideas we started the chapter with. Uh, we had some basic concepts like the point source, array, a wave front. We saw that the speed of sound in a medium is equal to uh, the square root of the bulk modulus over the volume density. And as always for any wave, the speed is the product of wavelength and frequency. Every traveling sound wave is accompanied by two waves. The first one is the displacement wave that shows us how much is the displacement of a molecule of the medium because of the propagation of the wave. SM is the, uh, SM is the displacement amplitude. The other wave is the variation of the pressure because of the propagation of the wave. And this is another sinusoidal function, delta PM is the pressure amplitude, which is the maximum change in the pressure due to the wave. These two waves are 90 degrees out of phase. One is cosine, the other one is a sine, and their amplitudes are related through the properties of the medium and the property of the wave. In the interference of uh, sound, wave, sound waves, we saw that interference of sound waves is very complicated because it is a three-dimensional problem. So we considered the case where we had two point sources driven by the same source. And the question is, when these waves travel in three dimensions, what will be the type of interference at a given point, like point P? Here are the two sources. So this is the uh, geometry we have, and the phase difference between the two waves at point P, that is phi, is related to the path length difference, the difference in the distances traveled by the two waves to reach point P through this equation, which you can use to consider constructive and destructive interference. Constructive interference occurs if the difference in the distances of the two waves is an integral multiple of the wavelength. Destructive interference occurs if the path length difference is an odd multiple of half wavelengths. So with this, let's consider some uh, problems from the textbook on the interference of sound waves and we will consider here problem 57 which says in this figure two speakers separated by distance d1 which is two meters are in phase means they are connected to the same instrument assume the amplitudes of the sound waves from the speakers are approximately the same at the listener's ear which is at a distance d2 of four meters directly in front of one speaker. Okay, so we have the two speakers and we have the detector or the listener there and we are given these two uh, distances. What we want to do now is to uh, change the frequency. Everything is fixed. The sources are fixed, the detector is fixed. But what we want to do now is to change the frequency. Okay, here is what we want to do, these are the two speakers connected to the same generator. So we will change the frequency of the generator in the audible range, okay? In the audible range, which is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. As we do so, we will observe constructive destructive interference as we change the frequency. So the question, it is very lengthy, but I can summarize it as this. What are the three lowest frequencies at which we will get minimum signal, that is destructive interference, and what are the three lowest frequencies at which we will get 
uh, maximum signal or constructive interference. So here is again the situation. I will call this source S1, this is source S2. So here is the distance L1 traveled by the wave from one to the ear. And this is the distance L2 traveled by the wave from source two to the ear. And remember the basic equation we have. The equation that gives us the phase difference at this point in terms of the difference in length between uh, these two waves is given by this equation here. Minima or destructive interference occur when delta L, the difference between these two distances, is an odd multiple of lambda over 2, well, lambda over 2, 3 lambda over 2, 5 lambda over 2, and so on, which we can compactly write as m plus half into lambda, where m is an integer. Maxima, or constructive interference, occurs when the path length difference, delta L, is an, uh, is an integral multiple of lambda, 0, lambda, 2, lambda, 3, lambda, 4, lambda, or compactly m times lambda, where m is an integer. So we will use these equations to find the frequencies that will give us minima, destructive interference, and maxima, constructive interference. The basic equation to start with is what is the path length difference between these two waves. So find L1, find L2, find delta L, and then proceed with the frequencies. So from the geometry, given in the problem, we have L1 uh, is equal to D2 in the problem. The problem calls this D2, and as given in the problem, this is equal to 4 meters, and L2, as you can see, is D1 squared plus D2 squared under the root, so that is equal to D1 squared plus D2 squared under the root, that is Pythagoras and this is 4.47 meters. So delta L, which is L2 minus L1, 4.47 minus 4 is 0.47 meters, and that is fixed. Nothing is moving. Now let's look for the minima, for minima. How do we get minima? Well, we get minima, as you can see from this equation here, if delta L, Delta L is equal to M plus half into lambda. Okay, there is the equation. So what I will do is I will take a common denominator and bring the lambda here. So delta L over lambda is equal to, uh, delta L over lambda is M, sorry, 2M, 2M plus 1 over 2. 2M plus 1 over 2. Now remember what is lambda. We have V is equal to lambda F. V is the speed of sound. This is traveling in air. Speed of sound in air is 343. That is fixed. So what is lambda? Lambda is equal to V over F. And therefore 1 over lambda, which is what we need here, is V, uh, sorry, F over V. Let me take that one there. So we have delta L times 1 over lambda, which is F over V, is equal to 2M plus 1 divided by 2. And therefore, the frequencies that will give me minima are given by, according to this equation, is equal to 2M plus 1 into V, okay, divided by 2 times delta L. Well, delta L is there, it's 0.47. V is the speed of sound in air, which is 343 meters per second. So now we can make a table. There is a nice table. Here is M, and here is the frequency that will give me the corresponding minimum. And we just need, the problem is asking just for the first three. So let's take the fairest possible values of M. The first value of M, look at that, 0, 1, 2, 3. So let me take 0. If I put 0 here, then this will be 0. And I have 1 over 2 delta L times V. Substitute the values, and you will get 363. Of course, this is in hertz. If I put M equal to 1, okay, then this will be 
2 plus 1, 3, V over 2, L, and that will give me 1090 hertz. And if I put M equal to 2, in here, this will be 5V over 2L, and that is 1816 hertz, and you can continue, but this is what the problem is asking for, the three lowest frequencies at which we will get minima or destructive interference. Now, as a continuation of this, remember that we want to tune the generator in the audible range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, okay? So how many as we tune it in this range? Remember that the first minimum will occur at 363. So you start increasing 20, 30, 40, 100, 300, 363, you will get the first minimum. You don't hear any sound. Then you keep increasing the frequency, you get the next one at 1090. You keep increasing the frequency, you get the next at 1816. So how many minima will we get in this range? Well, to get that, if we want to know how many minima are there in the audible range, in the audible range. Well, all what you have to do is find how much is this M. Okay, so if we now uh, take this there, this would be 2, 2F, two 2F. Two delta L over V, 2F delta L over V is equal to 2M plus 1, 2M plus 1. So how much is M? M is equal to 1 half, okay, 1 half, and then you take this one there, it will be minus 1, and you have 2F delta L over V minus 1. Now, delta L is fixed, V is fixed. What's the maximum frequency we can have in the audible range? The maximum frequency is 20 kilohertz, which is 2 times 10 to the power 4 hertz. Put it there, delta L, V, solve for M, you will find that M is equal to 27. M is equal to 27. Here is the answer for this, 27. So how many minima do we have? We have 28, because remember that M equal to zero will, will also give us a minimum. So zero up to 27, that is 28 values of the frequency, we will get a minima, or 28 minima. Now we do the same thing, but now we are asking for maxima, which are given by this equation here. So if we want maxima, <laughs> The condition for maxima is that delta L is equal to, delta L is equal to M lambda, okay? And therefore, delta L over lambda is equal to M, uh, V is equal to lambda F, lambda is V over F, so 1 over lambda is F over V, put it here. So this is uh, delta L times F over V is equal to M, and therefore the frequencies that will give us maxima are given by MV over delta L. Okay, these are the frequencies that will give us maxima. So again, now make your table. Here is M, and here is the corresponding frequency that will give me a maximum, or constructive interference. If I put M equal to zero, F is zero. Nothing is working. We didn't switch on the instrument yet. So go to the next L. <coughs> go to uh, the next, uh, uh, go to the next uh, M, that is one. You will get the frequency 726 hertz. M equal to two will get you 1453, and then you can get, you can continue with this to get uh, the third maximum. Again, we ask, we ask the same question, how many maxima, how many maxima are there 
in the audible range? Well, you can solve for M, M is equal to F delta L over V. So F is the maximum we can get, two times 10 to the power four hertz, delta L point 47 <clears throat> divided by 343. And if you, uh, if you put the number here, uh, you will get you will get this as 27.5, 27.5. So what do we get? We get 27 maximum, okay? Uh, one, two, three, all the way up to there, okay? Let me just double check this one. Okay, we have two, 10 to the power four times 0.47 divided by 343, the answer is 27.5. So you go to the one before it, which is 27. So you have 27 maxima appearing in this range. Okay, so here we have uh, a problem on the interference of sound waves. Let me just bring to your attention another kind of problems that could occur. Here is the equation that relates the phase difference to the path length difference, okay? Playing with this equation, you can see that the path length difference, uh, the, sorry, the phase difference is equal to F delta L two pi over V. Now let's see what do we have. Two pi is a constant. V is the speed of sound in air, 343. So these are constants. These are the two quantities that we can change. So you can have two types of problems. In one type, you fix delta L, like the problem we have just made, okay? Here, nothing is moving, so delta L is fixed. What did we change? We changed the frequency. You have another kind of problems where you fix the frequency, but now you change delta L. How do you change delta L? By getting the detector moving. And you have plenty of exam problems like this. For example, if you look at the collection of exam problems on Chapter 17, you will see plenty of problems where you have something like this. Here is a detector. So this is uh, source S1, and here opposite to it, you have another detector. So this is S2, sorry, source S1, source S2, and here is the detector D. So this is L2, and this distance here is L1. What we want now, what, the, what usually the problem asks for, is for the detector to start moving between the two sources. If it moves, these distances will change, and therefore delta L will change, and therefore the phase difference will change. So maybe you start with a maximum, and you get a minimum, or vice versa. You can have any type of motion, like this one, like, for example, you can have these sources, like the problems we have just made, like this, and the detector starts here, and the detector moves this way. Okay, and instead of moving between, it moves at any arbitrary direction, and the problem could be how many maxima or how many minima would the detector observe as he moves from this point to that point. So you have plenty of problems like this, and I just want to bring it to your attention that you must practice such problems with uh, regard to interference of sound waves. Okay, now let's move to the next concept we consider in chapter 17, which is the intensity and sound level. So let's review first what we studied there. The intensity of a sound wave is given by, this is its symbol I, is P is over four pi R squared, PS is the uh, power of the source, which is a property of the source, and R is the distance from the source. We also define the sound level beta as equal to 10 log I over I0. The beauty of this is it changes something that is given as powers of 10 into a simple number that we can understand and track. The intensity is related to the displacement amplitude by this equation here. So here is the properties of the medium, rho and V, and this is the property of the wave. 
clearly as the intensity increases, the displacement amplitude increases. You can add intensities, but you cannot add sound levels because sound levels are given as logarithms. So be careful. You cannot add them. You can add the intensities, and then if you like, get the total beta at the end. This is a very important point to keep in mind. So let's now consider a problem. We did a problem in the class where we increased beta by 40 decibels, and the question was, what is uh, the increase in the intensity? By what ratio or what, what multiple is the intensity and the pressure amplitude increased? Here we have another problem, which is problem 99 from the old edition. It says, you are standing at a distance d from an isotropic point source of sound. You walk 50 meters toward the source and observe that the intensity of uh, the sound has doubled. Calculate the distance d. So the idea here is I have a source of sound like a speaker, okay? And I'm standing here at a distance d from the speaker. Then I walk, okay? I walk 50 meters, isn't it? I walk 50 meters toward the source, and as I do so, I have uh, an instrument to measure the intensity. I found that if I move 50 meters toward the source, the intensity is doubled. So given this, what is the original distance d from the source? So let's draw what we have here. Here is uh, the, the, the situation. This is the sound source, isotropic sound source, okay, it emits sound with equal intensity in all directions. So this is the source of sound, and here is where you are. Originally, you are at this point, so you measure some intensity, let's call it I1. You walk toward the source, okay, toward the source. You walk this way to some point here, and how much did you move? You moved a distance of 50 meters, where your original distance from the source is D. Your original distance from the source is D, and then you move 50 meters toward the source, measure the intensity again, let's call it I2, and you find that I2 is equal to twice I1. Given this, what is your original distance from the source? So let me call this remaining distance here, let me call it small r. Now, for this we will use the variation of intensity with distance. And if I am at the original distance, then I1 is equal to P is over 4 pi, the distance is d squared. The new intensity, I2, is Ps over 4 pi. New distance from the source is R squared. Now let me divide this over that. So I have P, P is over 4 pi R squared divided by this. So take the reciprocal. 4 pi D squared over Ps. And what are we told? I2 is equal to twice I1. It is double. So this over this will equal to 2. Cancel the PS, cancel 4 pi, and then what do I have? I have D squared over R squared is equal to 2. What is R? R is D minus 50. So D, let me first take the the square d over r squared is equal to 2 so d over how much is r it is d minus 50 d minus 50 squared is equal to 2 now take the square root of both sides the square root of this will be d over d minus 50 and the square root of this is plus minus square root of 2 be careful take all the possibilities now, how much is this? This is plus minus 1.4. That is the square root of uh, root 2. Square root of 2. Let me now take the positive answer and see what do I get. 
it will be d over d minus 50 is equal to 1.4. So, what do I have? I have d and then multiply this, 1.4 d, and this will be minus 5 times 14, 70. So, take the 70 here, bring the d here, 1.4 minus 1 is 0.4. 0.4 d is equal to 70. So d is equal to 70 over 0.4 and that is equal to 700 over 4. How much is that? 125, 25 times 7, uh, that is 175, something like that. If I take the positive answer, I get yes, 172 meters. Now, if I take the negative answer here, what do I get? I get D over D minus 50 is equal to minus 1.4. So, D is equal to minus 1.4 D plus, this times that would be 70. Okay, take this to the side, 1 plus 1.4, is 2.4 d is equal to 70 so d is equal to 70 over 2.4 and that is equal to 29.3 meters okay 29.3 meters mathematically it is correct it's a distance positive distance now physically does it make sense of course, this doesn't make sense because the original distance must be more than 50. I was something more than 50, and then I walked 50. So it cannot be less than 50, and therefore this is the correct answer. This was the original distance of the detector from the source. Finally, with regard to chapter 17, we come to problems involving the resonance of sound waves. So let's look at some problems. We did a checkpoint in the class, so now we will do some problems. And just let us remind ourselves about what we said with regard to the resonance of sound waves. Resonance was studied in two objects, a tube that is open at both ends and a tube that is closed at one end, open at the other end. For the tube that is open at both ends, that is this one, we found that the resonant frequencies are given by NV over 2L. V is the speed of sound in air, 343. L is the length of the tube. And here, all harmonics are present, even and odd. For the tube that is closed at one end, we found that the resonant frequencies are given by NV over 4L, and in this case, only the odd harmonics are present. In both cases, again, the V is the speed of sound, which is 343 meters per second. So let's look at some problems involving the resonance of sound waves. Let's look at problem 16 in the textbook, which says, organ pipe A, so this is basically a pipe, with both ends open, has a fundamental frequency of 425 Hz. I have the fundamental frequency, in this one, I know what is V, so I can find the length of this tube. The fifth harmonic of organ pipe B, so we have pipe A and pipe B. Pipe A is open at both ends. Pipe B has one end open, the other end is closed. So the fifth harmonic of B has the same frequency as the second harmonic of pipe A. Given this, the problem says what is the length of pipe A and what is the length of pipe B. Let's start with A because it is straightforward. Okay, starting with A. A is open at both ends, so if N is NV over 2LA, the fundamental frequency says V over 2LA, so 
the length of A is V over, let me be careful here, this is F1 of A, okay? V over 2F1A. This is 343 over 2 times 425, and that will give me the length of A as equal to 0 0.404, okay? 0 0.404 meters, okay? Now let's come to part B. Part B says, the fifth harmonic of B. According to our book, the fifth harmonic of a closed a pipe that is closed at one end means n is equal to 5. So if 5b, the fifth harmonic of b, is equal to what? Is equal to the second harmonic of a. So if second harmonic of a. Now let's write what are these. This is a tube that is closed at both ends. So for B, if NB is NV over 4LB, it's closed at one end. So if 5B is 5V, 5V over 4LB is equal to, the resonant frequencies of A are given by this. So if I want 2, I just put 2 there. That will cancel this, and this will be V over LA. The speed of sound will cancel and you can see that 5LA 5LA is equal to 4LB and therefore the length of B is equal to 5LA divided by 4. We found LA here multiplied by 4 div uh, multiplied by 5 divided by 4 and this will be equal to point 504.504 meters okay and that will be the length of both tubes <clears throat> next let's look at uh, this problem problem 65 in the textbook this is really a deep problem you really have to think about it and consider the many various possibilities that can occur to reach the answer to the problem. So it is a very nice uh, uh, conceptual problem. Okay, you have really to think about it. So let's see what do we have here. <clears throat> the problem says, this is problem 65, in the textbook it says in pipe a we have a pipe a in pipe a the ratio of a particular harmonic frequency to the next lower harmonic frequency the ratio is 1.4 in pipe b the ratio of a particular harmonic frequency to the next lower harmonic frequency is 1.2 how many open ends are in pipe a and pipe b in other words determine whether pipe A is open at one end, both ends, or if it is closed. So I will start with pipe A, do the analysis for it, and leave pipe B for you. We don't know the type of A, so we have to consider both possibilities. The first possibility, so here is the analysis for pipe A. One if it is open at both ends. We don't know. Let's see, if it is open, can we get the ratio there? Well, the resonant frequencies for uh, a tube that is open at both ends is Fn is equal to Nv over 2L. What are we looking for? The next lower. The next lower is Fn minus one. You just decrease by one. So N minus 1, V over 2L. What do we need to find? What? The ratio of these. The ratio of the higher to the lower. So we divide these two. Fn over Fn minus 1 is equal to what? 
n v over 2l divided by this, so it will be 2l over n minus 1 v. Cancel the v and cancel 2n. Uh, 2l, this is n over n minus 1. How much is this ratio for pipe A? It is 1.4. So 1.4 is equal to n over n minus 1. So do the algebra. 1.4 n minus 1.4 is equal to n. Take in here the 1.4 there. 1.4 n minus n is 0.4 n. That is 1.4. So, n is equal to 1.4 over 0.4. How much is that? That's 14 over 4, uh, which is 7 over 2, which is 3.5. Can n be anything but integer? No. So, this is incorrect. That means the assumption we started with is impossible. It's weaker. Pipe A cannot be open at both ends, okay? Now let's test the other possibility, which is if pipe A is closed at one end, what will be the resonant frequencies? Fn is equal to Nv over 4L. The next lower, it's not Fn minus 1, it's Fn minus 2 because now we only have the odd, 1, 3, 5, 7. So each n differs by 2 from the next one. And therefore the next lower will be Fn minus 2 and that will be n minus 2 V over 4L. Now take the ratio. Fn over Fn minus 2 is equal to n V over 4L times 4L over N minus 2V. 4L cancels, the V cancels, and I have N over N minus 2. How much is this ratio? Again, this is 1.4. So 1.4 is equal to N over N minus 2. Now do the algebra. 1.4N minus 2.8, okay, is equal to N. 1.4 minus 1 is 0.4 n is equal to 2.8. So n is equal to how much? n is 2.8 over 0 0.4. This is 28 over 4, which is 7. Can we get n equal to 7 with this type of tube? Yes, because it is old, so it can satisfy this. And therefore, the assumption we started with is a correct one and therefore the conclusion is pipe A is a pipe which is open at one end closed at the other end. I'd like you to do the same thing with pipe B and if you do it for pipe B you will find that pipe B do the same analysis pipe B is open at both ends okay so do the analysis and verify that. Let me conclude here with uh, one problem uh, this time it is from the exams. This is problem 16 in the exam collection of chapter 17. Okay, and it's a nice one. It's an important idea because how do you translate a, a shape like that, given like this to a harmonic number? Okay, so let's see that we can practice that. The problem says sound waves of frequency 340 hertz are sent into the top of a vertical tube. So here we have a tube. At the end of it, we have, uh, it is filled partially with water, and we send sound, let's say that we have a tuning fork. So it sends sound waves down the tube. They have a frequency of 340 hertz. And we found that as we send uh, this wave with this frequency, that standing waves are produced as shown in here. What is the height level of water? How much is the level of water? The total is 160. We want the water, so we have to find the length of this. This is basically a tube that is open at one end, closed at the other end. What is the harmonic number 
corresponding to this pattern in here. Well, remember that we go with quarter of waves. So this is n equal to 1. This is n equal to 3. This is n equal to 5. Okay? So for this case, the harmonic number here is n equal to 5. This is what I want you to train yourself on. 1, 3, 5. And therefore, the harmonic number is 5. If I know the harmonic number, I can proceed with the rest of, of the problem. So for the glass, what should we say that? What should we say there? For the air tube, the air tube, where we have air. We have the total tube, the water tube, the air tube. For the air tube, we can think of it, so this is 16 in the exam. For the air tube, we can think of it as a tube that is open at one end only, closed at the other end. So the resonant frequencies are if, if n is n v over 4 l of the air. Huh? Now we found n is equal to 5, so f 5 is equal to 5 v over 4 l a, and therefore the length of the air tube is equal to 5 v over 4 f 5. Now let's find how much is that. The length of the air tube, 5. How much is the speed of sound? He tells us to take it 340. If he doesn't give any value, by default, it is 343. But if he asks you to take a specific value in the problem, take that value, like here. He's telling us to take it as 340. So we take it there, 340. Divided by 4 times the frequency corresponding to this wave, 340 hertz. 340 hertz. Cancel these, 5 over 4 is 1.25 meters or 125 centimeters. So how much is the length of the water tube? It is 160 minus 125. So the length of the water tube is the total length of the tube, 160 minus what we found here, 125, and that is equal to 35 centimeters. Okay, there you have it. So that's how you uh, get out the harmonic number for a given pattern. And this brings us to the end of the problems we need to consider with regard to chapter 17.